Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to a game day episode of your favorite podcast about the Seattle Kraken, Locked on Kraken. I am your host, Erica L. Ayala. Today, we're going to talk about a lot of moves, waiver wires, acquisitions, injuries, and then also a critically important tournament where it might be Morgan Geeky and Maddie Beneers going head to head, all that and more on this game day episode of Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. A happy and healthy Tuesday and game day to you and yours, Seattle hockey fans. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Kraken, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where we give you your favorite team every day. And today, we have a lot to talk about. Carson Coleman mentioned him briefly yesterday. There was a question about Carson and his usage. Well, Carson Coleman placed on waivers. Speaking of waivers, Eleni Tolvanen picked up from the Seattle Kraken off of waivers. He was put on waivers by the Nashville Predators. We'll have some other locked on experts that we'll tap into for that. And then, of course, we have not really an update on Justin Schultz, but we have an update on Olofsson. So we don't know where, where what's happening with Schultz yet. The Seattle Kraken did not practice yesterday, so we'll have to wait till media availability a little bit later today as of the time of this recording to figure out what we know about Schultz. But we know Olofsson's coming up. He's been uh, brought up from the Firebirds. So like I said, lots to get into on this episode of Locked on Kraken. We're going to start with Olofsson. Gustav Olofsson is coming to Seattle. Now, he is coming from the Coachella Valley Firebirds. He's in our system. He played one game with us this year, and he kind of split time. He was with Susie. He was with Schultz. He was a little bit with Larson as far as um, per natural stat trick and some of his defensive pairings. He only played the one game. He had, you know, Looking at the, it was about 30 seconds per shift with uh, 31 seconds with Susie. He had, um, let's see, 30, 31 seconds total, uh, another 30 seconds with Justin Schultz and four seconds with, uh, Larson and one second with Vince Dunn. And again, those are likely just as people are shifting on and off the ice. So, Don't have a great sample size. I think what this tells us, though, is that Justin Schultz might not be ready. We don't know what the prognosis is. Is he day-to-day? Is he week-to-week? Is this a long-term injury? Again, he took that hit. Five-game suspension. We talked about that yesterday on that hit that he uh, received. Um, Or, excuse me, five-minute major. We have... Alexiak, who's on a three-game suspension. We haven't gotten word if there was a suspension, or at least if we have, I missed it. It hasn't come through my inbox yet. Um, No suspension as far as that hit that uh, Justin Schultz took. But um, So we have a lot of things changing in the lineup. I think that's the most immediate and pressing. We already know that Jamie Alexiak is out of the lineup. Um because he's on a three-game suspension. The first game was Florida tonight against Tampa because it's a game day. That will be the second game. And then we talked about it yesterday that he will not be available for Carolina later in this week. So Alexiak, or I should say Justin Schultz, was already you know, having to figure things out because he and Jamie Alexiak – has spent 251 minutes together. So now we have both of them out. Alexiak on a suspension, Schultz with an injury. So we have to figure out 
what the defensive pairs will look like. Adam Larson, and we talked about this yesterday, mentioned, yeah, look, this is what happens in hockey. People get injured. There are suspensions. You go with the flow. But what if the flow don't go? You know, de- defense is uh, not my favorite thing about the Seattle Kraken. I think we've been playing a really great uh, team defense, mostly on the checking, so wanting to be aggressive in um, the neutral zone, uh, offensive zone. So we'll see. We'll see. Olafson is another body, but how much time does he get? We'll talk about that, I guess, on tomorrow's show. All right. So Carson Coleman waived. Uh, again, I haven't, as of the time of this recording, heard that he's been picked up, but he signed a one year, 825,000 AAV contract. He played 25 games for us last season. Played 14 games this year. Uh, Of course, some might remember that Carson Coleman played for the United States at the World Championships, Men's Worlds last year. So we'll see if he clears waivers. But again, it was already starting to be asked what his usage was. Where does he fit in here? So we'll see. Um, But so... With that news, I mean, we do have a game day, so I want to get to what we're going to see against Tampa, but we're going to save that for a little bit later in the show. Um, Another bit of news, and this is a a bit of a silly and fun one, but um, I didn't get to this on yesterday's episode, but every once in a while, I see this in basketball a handful of times, you'll see that players will hop in to the scrum. And I didn't get into this, but Morgan Geeky asked Matty Beneers his final question in the scrum on Sunday's win over the Florida Panthers. And it had everything to do with a Mario Kart championship or a tournament that's coming up. Um, And this sparked Morgan Geeky yesterday to tweet uh, basically an AMA where he had people asking about the Mario go-kart tournament, what, you know, what character he uses, all of these different things that honestly, I haven't played go-kart since Nintendo 64. So I, I, I'm not up to date on all of these things. Um, I'm a, I'm a Nintendo gal through and through for sure though. Um, so it was pretty cool. If you want to check that out, uh, Morgan Geeky showing off some more personality, uh, not only can you not out Pizza the Hut, but apparently, according to Morgan Geeky, you can't beat him in Mario Kart. So that was just a little fun thing that happened on Kraken Twitter yesterday. But coming up next, what do we know about Ellie Tolvanen? And is he a good fit for Seattle at this point in time? We're going to take it over to Locked On Predators, where Ann Kimmel gave some great insight and analysis, really starting on Monday, and then has been on the ball on this topic since that is what's coming up on locked on kraken this episode of locked on kraken is brought to you by bet online now bet online has everything that you need if you want to wager on your favorite sports they have the latest odds the latest trends from every professional and amateur sport you can imagine they've got world cup basketball football and of course ice hockey. And of course, ice hockey. You can find it all on betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, which of course you do, because you listen to the Locked On Network, including Locked On Kraken, you can find sports podcasts there as well. It's the fastest and easiest way to get all of the information that you need to make an informed decision when you are making your wagers. Bet online is where the game starts. And thank you, as always, for making Locked on Crack in your first listen of the day. I want to make sure that you also listen to Locked on Sports today. Now, we obviously here at Locked on Kraken are going to be talking about the NHL, but you can listen to the news that you need to know across sports with Locked on Experts giving you all of the insights and analysis that you need 
in all sports. Also, make sure you're listening to Locked on NHL and our game-to-game coverage. We've got folks going on waivers. We've got folks clearing waivers, folks being picked up off of waivers. The, you know, the, the player assistance program, the New Jersey Devils losing their first game after having a multi-point lead. That You can find it all. So make sure if you want all sports, you go to Locked on Sports today. And if you want a recap of all things NHL, Go to Locked On NHL and our game-to-game coverage. All right, but back to Locked On Kraken. I'm very curious about this Mario Kart um, tournament. Like I said, I personally have been out of the Mario Kart game for a a while, but I always loved Mario Kart, um, and so I might need to to get back into the game. Morgan Geeky and Maddie Beneers have inspired me. Uh, Anyway... (laughs) Tolvanen. Tolvanen, we pick up off of uh, waivers. The the Nashville Predators put him on waivers yesterday. He's a 30th overall pick, a pick in the first round for the Predators back in 2017. 23 years old, 5'10", 191. Now, he hasn't played a game for the Preds since 1119. He's been a scratch for seven straight games, 12 total on the season. Now, Ann Kimmel mentioned Tolvanen on Monday's episode of Locked on NHL. And of course, also has a really in-depth analysis of Tolvanen on Locked on Predators. You know, we love Ann Kimmel here on Locked on Kraken, and we'll probably have her on to talk a little bit more about Tolvanen, especially once we kind of figure out where he fits into the mold. But he's playing less than 14 minutes or excuse me, um, he's playing less than 15 minutes. He's at 14.48. He's got two goals. He's He's got four points in 13 games this season. Last year in 11, uh, in 75 games, excuse me, he scored 11 goals. He also scored 11 goals in the 2021 season where he had 40 games played. In that 2021 COVID season, as a lot of people know it, he scored 40 points, 20 of those on the power play. And if I had to guess, that might be why Tolvanen on waivers was something that Seattle wanted to pursue. So I'm going to give you the link in the show notes for Ann Kimmel's episode if you want to listen or watch for that, she also writes for Sports Illustrated uh, for uh, about the Nashville Predators. So if you rather read an article, check that out. But also, there's there's an article at the Athletic and an article over on the Seattle Times. And I think all of these again in the show notes. My assessment of Tolvanen between Ann Kimmel, uh, Kate Shefty at the Seattle Times, and Shana Goldman from the Athletic. A few things that we need to consider about Tolvanen. Yes, he's been scouted as an amazing talent, perhaps top six worthy forward. He's a winger. Um, We're pretty solid on defensemen. So, or excuse me, centermen. We we need defensemen, in my opinion. Anyway, um, Tolvanen has that potential. And Kimmel alluded to this, but went she went short of uh, assuming this was the case, but she did talk about how it, the, the Predators have noticed over time he's kind of fallen out of favor with the organization. In the article for The Athletic, there had, there, they allude to perhaps um, his work ethic being something that's been somewhat of a problem in the past. So are these red flags? Well, I, and I think Anne kind of hits on this best. And I'll add to what Ann says by saying, if you're not jiving with your team, it can be hard. And it's certainly understandable. Is it professional? That's a, a, that's a slippery slope. But it's understandable if your attitude changes. Now, should it change again? That's the professionalism aspect of it, but it's certainly understandable from a human element. So if there were things that were happening or there was just nothing that Tolvanen can do in that system to prove that he could get more ice time, maybe a fresh look will be better for him. Now, a lot of people said that about Ryan Donato, and you know, I love him more than my luggage. So I don't know what Tolvanen's going to be for us. 
similarly to what Ann Kimmel has said, we just don't know. So until we hear from Tolvanen, until for us at the Seattle Kraken, until we see him, I um, am going to reserve comments. So I'm extremely excited to talk to Ann Kimmel a little bit more if and when we see Tolvanen. What this means for other forwards, I'm not sure. But I do think the Seattle Kraken know that they have to be a little bit better in certain areas if they want to maintain the spot that we're in right now, which is in playoff contention. And that, my friends, is super exciting. So coming up next, let's talk about our opponent for today because it's a game day, you dang skippy. Don't for, I didn't forget. There was just a lot of news. You have to get through all the news, and I wanted to do that thoroughly. But it is a game day. We're going to take you to some of the game notes. And again, Allison Lucan, I'm assuming Bob, I hope everything's okay. Maybe he's just on a little break or something. But it doesn't seem like Bob Condor is on this road trip. Perhaps much needed break for him. I hope it's nothing more serious. But um, Allison Lucan is doing an amazing job. So we'll go over to her uh, three essentials and some stats. And of course, the side-by-side -side comparison as we go up against the Tampa Bay Lightning tonight, different part of Florida, but still in the Sunshine State. That's what's coming up on Locked on Kraken. Fans, friends, listeners, viewers, thank you as always for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily routine. I hope you can tell I'm having a lot of fun here on this show as your host since the beginning of this show. I hope you also know that I try to get a little bit better. They say get 1% better with every upload, and I'm working to do that for you as well. Always open to constructive criticism. There's certain things that I won't necessarily always be able to control, especially when I'm on the road, like have more Kraken stuff in my background. But, you know, I always, I always read it, and I'm grateful for your comments. Let's talk about the game day. That's right. We have the Seattle Kraken against the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I'm excited for this. I think the Seattle Kraken have done a pretty solid job um, on the road, and we want to finish off strong. The Seattle Kraken, and speaking of comments, and I saw these comments, and we've looked at the schedule, it is a tough go, certainly through December, and as someone said on YouTube, in the next 10 games. Striatic, always appreciate your comments. And I think that's very accurate. So getting the wins against teams that we should win against is going to be important. What do things look like in the head-to-head -head for the Kraken and Tampa Bay? Up on the screen, I have the head-to-head -head that the Seattle Kraken have sent us. I will read it off for those listening on audio. We appreciate you. So this game is going to be at 4 p.m. Pacific time at, I believe, most people say Amelie. I'm a Latin, so I'm always a little softer on my A's. Amelie Arena in Tampa, Florida. Went there a few years ago for the women's Final Four. Really liked it. They've got a nice little uh, walkway over by the water, uh, kind of like a... Uh, kind of like Chicago. I don't know. I always mess up bodies of water and what they're called. Anyway, really fun. Okay, let's look at the home record for Tampa Bay. They're at 10-4-1, so playing them at home is going to be tough. We are seven, we, excuse me, we are nine, two, and one on the road. So we're road warriors. So I don't know that there's necessarily an advantage. I always think the home squad has a little bit more of the advantage. We have the exact same record in the last 10 games, and we have the exact same points record, uh, or we have the exact same amount of points, excuse me, Overall, overall record for the Lightning, 17, 9, and 1. We sit at 16, 7, and 3. Um, so Tampa Bay is slightly ahead of us in the standing. So this is a win that, all right, let me get rid of this. This is a win I'd like us to pick up. This is a team where essentially, st statistically speaking, excuse me, we're about even. And hey, once you get deep into the playoffs, not only are you playing teams that you're likely toe to toe with, but sometimes you're playing with teams that have a better regular season record than you do, depending how the bracket works out. So getting wins like this, I think are critical. Back to the graphic, other things I don't want to talk about. Look at their Nikita Kucherov. 
39 points with is their leading scorer, uh, less, uh, more than a 10, 10 point difference than our leading scorer. Now, I like this for Seattle because we have a balanced scoring. We really, really do. We've had what, um, 18 or so different scores, goal scores. It's not even counting assists. Andre Burakovsky leads things for us, so I like that. Power play. Look at these power plays. 27%, 27.7, excuse me, percent for Tampa Bay. We're at 23.9. So again, I don't know who's going to slot in, but Tolvin in at least a few seasons ago was pretty good on the power play. And when you lose Schultz, which again is an assumption, we don't have an official word, but Schultz, Again, he's a defenseman, but we need to make sure we're doing good on the power play. I'm very curious to see uh, what the power play units are going to look like. We'll keep an eye on that. The penalty kill. The Tampa Bay Lightning have a better penalty kill than us, and that's where Allison's analysis, I think, comes in pretty handy. So we're going to go to the three-game essentials by Allison Lucan. You can find this, of course, on the Seattle Kraken website and in the show notes. We got so many notes for you, little nuggets. I hope you, you check them out. Support Ann, support Allison, support Kate. You know I'm all about making sure we put other people on, and they do great analysis, and that's where I get a lot of my information. Okay, speaking of special teams, this is what Allison said. The Lightning take more penalties uh, than most. They're 23rd overall. That, she says, bodes well for the Seattle Kraken on the power play. We just talked about that. With Schultz out, is uh, Tolvin in someone that can step in to be determined? On the other end of the ice, Seattle's penalty kill will need to be focused on continuing its strong efforts. They killed uh, nine of their last ten in the last three games. Um, but also we have to know that... Um, We have to know that this is not only the fifth best power play in the league, but also a group that draws more that that draws 3.6 penalties per game. I always think it's funny when it's 0.6. I know it's because they average everything out, but how do you like you can't have 0.6 anyway? Um, roughly four penalties a game. Oof. Seattle's. Penalty kill worries me at times. And again, Dave Haxel wants his team playing five on five. So again, we see that um, it's good that for us, potentially, that Tampa takes a lot of penalties, but they also draw a lot of penalties. So we have to be careful on how we're playing that game. Uh, complete effort. We talked about this. I talked about it a lot yesterday. Beneers has been talking about it. Haxel has been talking about it. Yanni Gordon has been talking about it. Uh, Martin Jones talked about it. We played a complete game in Florida and we're still in Florida. So let's play another complete game. We don't want to go back into the loss column. We need to start building, whoop, start building momentum for our next winning streak. And why not start now? I want the Florida sweep. I'm in Florida. The team is in Florida. Let's get the Florida sweep. And then new faces, new places. Well, don't we know all about this? Um, we've talked about Tolvanen. We know that Alexiak is out. Schultz, who knows what's going on with him. Um, but we do expect Olofsson, and he, well, he is joining the team. So he, I'm assuming, will be available. So the lines might look a little different, or particularly the D pairs might look a little different. So how does that impact playing a complete game? How does that impact chemistry? How does that impact a team that didn't practice yesterday? They don't like practice. They like rest. And I get it. And they're doing okay. Um, at some point, though, I still do hold firm, hold fast, if you will, and stay true to the fact that we need practice, baby. We need practice. Okay, that is um, what we've got for today. Uh, uh, another little hit here, though, on the Morgan Geeky Mario Kart. This got picked up by the NHL. That's how much Morgan Geeky is a darling. I've apologized before. I am not a part of the Geeky squad. I didn't like his contract, but all right. He's doing some things, including making some national news, not lacking for confidence or skill. Seattle veteran ready to take on 
all challengers. Also think it's funny how they call anyone a Seattle veteran. Like everyone who's been on the team for two seasons is a Seattle veteran. Anyway, uh, look at just, uh, you know, some of these things. I did love this tweet. He talked about uh, the blue shells, you know, those that pop out and people can put them on the road and, you know, but he talks, uh, someone asking about the blue shells and, and have, uh, has anything, has he broken anything? He says the window shade next to me, on a seat on the plane, sorry, Air Canada. Um, you know, I don't know what all of these things are, but he's unlocked 2000 CC speed version of the game or 200 CC speed version of the game. That sounds awesome. He gave himself the goat emoji. Go for it, Morgan Geeky. Uh, if anyone has any this so this was the prompt if anyone has any mario kart questions ask away uh carson susie was invoked into this i don't think that he responded apparently oh hurt my heart ryan donato is the worst at mario kart um so i love this i love all of this uh the seattle sea wolves rugby team got involved you know, Ryan Ellis. <laughs> I love this. Can you teach me how to drive? I love that. I mean, this is just, it actually was a lot of fun. So good on Morgan Geeky. He also tweeted that he had a lot of fun with it. So I'm sure we'll be hearing more about the Mario Kart tournament. Uh, I think DJ Trunks is going to get involved. Apparently it's a player and staff tournament. Uh, Piper Shaw has gone on the record and we've seen on her social media that she travels with her, uh, I almost said Twitch. That's a different thing. Switch. Uh, that's how out of it I am. Again, I played on the original Nintendo 64 Mario Kart. It was amazing. I might still have a 64. I definitely have a Nintendo GameCube somewhere. Um, I'm a 60, I'm, I'm a Nintendo gal. Anyway, uh, I mostly like the adventure games. And by that, I really just mean that I play Zelda. I like playing Zelda quest style. Anyway, that's our show. The Seattle Kraken looking for a win. I want the Florida sweep, folks. So what does that mean we have to do? We have to hold fast. We have to stay true. And tonight, we glide together in unison as we say, let's go Kraken. But I won't end the show until I remind you to be kind to yourself and to others. Peace. Until tomorrow, where hopefully we're talking about another Seattle Kraken win. Take care, everyone.